drills. When do you want a corded drill and when do you want a cordless drill? Brian, there's no more basic tool than a drill for the typical homeowner, right? That's you can, right. It's I mean, versatile. It's can... one of the first power tools that you buy typically uh, as a homeowner. Really? One of the first ones? One of the first okay. ones. I mean, we've always said on our podcasts and back in the day, you buy a power tool when you have a project and you need it, right? So uh, when I set my daughter up in her apartment, we said, well, you know, she's going to be putting together some furniture and this and that. So we, a drill slash driver was a useful first power tool for her. Right. So let's, uh, let's talk about briefly yeah. what all, what are the uses for a typical owner? Why would you want to drill first? That's right. So obviously you're hanging uh, heavy pictures. You got to put wall anchors in the wall. You got to drill a hole for the anchor, uh, something like that. How about something every homeowner needs to do within the first year or two, and that's fix either the toilet paper hanger bar or a, the towel. Like those always rip out of the walls. If you have kids, yeah, they always yeah. get pulled out of the walls. The anchors don't hold, and you got to put in a better anchor or put in a new bar, or maybe you just want to replace the hardware yeah. uh, on your towel holder so or you put might, in a new one. That's right. You might need a drill for one of those projects. Yeah. Yes. So, I mean, uh, I use these all the time. There's always something to use a drill for. That's right. And I find more and more I'm using a drill as a driver to drive screws sure. as well. Yep, absolutely. But, but sometimes if you're a yeah. first-time homeowner or yeah. you don't have a lot of money. That's right. <laughs> so, so. so when are you going to go for one with a battery versus one with a tail, as I say, with a cord on it? Right. So basically it comes down to money versus convenience. Can you still find the corded ones? Absolutely. So you can get a pretty decent corded drill that's going to actually outperform the cordless one for 35, 40 45 bucks. bucks, up to 60 bucks. We, we found and a quarter cable and some others around yeah, 40 bucks. That's right. Amazingly. Yeah. And those are pretty good drills. I think they're six amp or something like that. Yeah. But you've got to be near enough to an outlet. Right. So you got to have a uh, obviously a cord. You got to have an extension cord because the cords are never long enough to actually use. Right. So you need a long extension cord. Um, it's not as convenient, but and maybe not as yeah, not as convenient. It's the bottom line. That's right. But if you spend the forty dollars, you now have a drill that's powerful, can drill holes, can, can drive, screws. drive screws. It's going to have a lot of power, and you never have to run a battery. And batteries. it's always going to work. Yeah. Exactly. So you don't have to worry about, did I charge this battery up the last time I used it? Right. Or did I forget to charge it? Um, some of the older or the, the really cheap cordless ones, the batteries will die if they're just sitting unattended for a while. The newest lithium ion ones, they'll hold the charge even if you're not using it. But still, did you remember to fully charge it before you put it away last time? And then will it have enough charge to do your project uh, to completion or are you going to have to get a second battery? Right, and this obviously adds money. And the other thing is I've noticed, you know, some of these are, it's a little bit of a pain to get the battery off. The Makitas are awesome, but um, if you don't, it seems to, to me that if you don't, you got to go go higher end if you go battery operated. That's you don't right. want to mess with the cheaper or lower ends because they're just more frustrating than they're worth. That's right. So something like this is going to be about $189. You can get a little more with features. With a charger yeah. and all the other That'd be two batteries, a charger, a case. Somewhere. Uh, for 270, you're going to get a hammer drill option, which we have another whole another show on. Um, a little more amperage, a little more torque, a little more power. But yeah, so it's going to cost a lot more money. So several years ago, meaning what eight years ago, when we first started our audio podcast, yeah, in '98, I believe it was '98. Oh wait, excuse me. Okay, <laughs> 2008. Oh, 2008. We did a podcast on drills, if you recall. That's right. And we also pre presented it to a small symposium locally uh, for podcasters. But what was interesting is I pulled out, I found an old drill. It was 40, 50 years old. Yeah. Was, I call it grandpa's drill. That's right. Because it came from my grandfather. It was an old craftsman uh, with a tail. Right. You know, corded drill. And it and still worked. <laughs> at the time, we did a competition. Oh, yeah, where we that's right. Holes I remember that. And, you know, uh, did, checked for speed, performance. With a modern, I won't mention the brand, but a modern, a more modern cordless drill, yes. higher end, yes. uh, just to see. And the grandpa's drill outperformed. Now that was before um, the lithium-ion technology right. that we had, that I now have. But 
Uh, I think that this, the, the same rule would still apply. The only difference is the lithium ion lasts a lot longer and they're lighter. Yes. Uh, so these are much better than the older uh, cordless drills. That's right. The old NICADs or yeah. nickel metal hydrides. Right. The lithium ion is really the way to go if you're going to get cordless. We haven't done that test. I don't know if I still have that drill, but it was an interesting test because the point was, here's a hand-me-down right. that outperformed but what I'm spending a decent amount of money. Now, now that I have some money, I'm not a first-time homeowner. I've right. been in the home for, you know, in my, in my second <laughs> home. I have a little bit more disposable income. I'm going to go for this every time. Right. For right. the convenience. But, but do, you do have you to weigh the, that, you know. Do you remember the photo shoot? Maybe it was a different podcast we did. We had 10 different drills laid out yeah. because we did pictures with right. the audio podcast. And we had them all laid out. And we talked about a lot of the differences between those, as I recall. Yeah. we got to do that again and do it on video. Right. So, I mean, the old drill didn't have... You know, it didn't have the handling that this one has. It didn't fit in your hand as it well. Didn't it didn't have reverse. Yeah, it well, it had reverse, I think. But it, Did it? it was just like a big piece of hunk of steel. That's right. <laughs> and it'll yep. probably last another 50 years if I still have it. Yeah. But anyway, it's just something to keep in mind, though. Like, if you're, you're on a budget, you don't need to go out and buy the latest, greatest. You could buy what seems to be the cheapest thing. Yeah. That's a quarter drill sitting on the shelf, not being highlighted. Yep. and actually have better performance than maybe the most expensive thing on the shelf. That's right. Yeah. So there you go. So uh, thanks for watching the Handy Guys. Uh, we're going to stay online for the live stream now, and we're just going to ramble on, and, and we're going to cut at this point. Um, all right. Is that how we do this? Yeah. Well, thanks for watching the Handy Guys. Um, if you're looking for a drill, check out our link below, and uh, we'll stay on if anyone has any questions. So anyone watching the, uh, the live stream, if you want to come into the chat, we'll <laughs> see that. And, uh, and we'll chat with you here and uh, answer any questions about drills or anything else for that matter. Uh, we're just going to hang out here for a little while. So uh, let's see what we got. Uh, no, we can't ask that question on the air. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so maybe our some... maybe our cameraman has a, a handy guy's question for us. <laughs> <laughs> He's being shy, being shy. So obviously this live streaming stuff is new for us. We're we're just figuring it out. This is only the second time we've ever tried to do this. So the way we're going to work it is we're going to kind of record our our show and then go into a Q and A period for a period of time. We haven't promoted this at all, so. Um, so, uh, very, there's only a handful of people watching live right now, it looks like. So, for a little background, how yeah. long does a battery typically last if you're using it constantly, and how long does it take to charge? Ah, how long does a battery last, how long does it take to charge? So, that's going to really vary depending on, um, a factor like this says 3.0 amp hours so that's a an indication of the size of the battery and that drives how long it's going to last and it's also going to depend what rigors you're putting the drill through so if you're drilling holes you may get under an hour with this battery if you're drilling holes through rafters with an auger bit all day you know you're going to get an hour out of it you might get half a day driving screws in a deck if you're driving, you know, 10 screws uh, an hour, right? You're gonna, it's gonna last you all day. So it's really gonna vary what you're, uh, what you're doing. If you're driving a lot of screws, it's gonna last, you know, under an hour or maybe just a little bit more than an hour. Um, but yeah, so you, you never know. So it's always good to have a second battery on hand and a lot of these kits come with uh, multiple batteries. The, uh, the charging time, again, it's going to vary depending on the manufacturer. They'll all promote that, but um, it'll be, you know, an hour for a charge. So what I do is I always keep a battery on the charger while I'm working. And sometimes I'll have two, two batteries in operation at the same time. So I'm, I'm using one. It dies. I'll swap the second one on there. I'll swap it with uh, the one charging when that one's fully charged, you know, something like that. All right, let's see if we've got anybody on the chat. So I, I tried to send, send it out via our uh, 
Twitter, but unfortunately the account password has been changed, so I can't do that. Yeah, Twitter got hacked or something, and oh, they okay. had to change the password. Um, so, you know, I was going to say about the batteries, I find that um, lithium ions, ever since I went to that, they charge a lot faster. They yes. do, on, on this ma particular manufacturer, the Makitas, they have like a quick charge. Uh, it doesn't necessarily do it fully, mm -hmm. but it does it so that it's very useful. So you can get, I, I want to say, 10 minutes, something like that. It gets it to like a usable amount. You can use it sure. for a while, maybe 15. And then there's a longer charge where it gets it to where it's fully charged. But um, the, the lithium ions are awesome as far as how fast they charge. Now, a lot of that's going to come down to manufacturer. Uh, the quality components, that sort of thing. That's where it make, that's where you're paying. When you get the premium brands, you're getting something that's just going to work a right. lot better. Um, I had uh, a nephew borrow this and the impact driver and a couple batteries, two or three batteries, and to do a, a huge deck. And they also had kind of a barn raising, had other friends bring their own uh, gear. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this stuff, he said, just... Blow them away. The yeah. impact driver, yeah. especially for the driving impact, screws. The impact, but just the brand, the, the, the Makita stuff was, yeah. yeah, he said everyone wanted to use this. Well, I had a Makita, I'll tell this story, um, you know, for our chat uh, or live stream viewers. Uh, I was building a bridge one time with the uh, Makita impact driver, a trail bridge, you know, out in the woods and at a campground. And the Makita impact driver um, went over the side into the creek into about two foot of water. Wow. So I said a few choice words. I jumped off down into the water, retrieved it. I pulled the battery off. I shook all the water out and I laid it out in the sun. And then I continued working with my, my second, I had two impact drivers. I continued, finished the decking on that bridge. Came back, um, you know, a couple hours later, put the battery back on. It was still working perfectly. Yeah, so, so it's, they're pretty durable. I've dropped them off of roofs. I've dropped them, uh, you know, so it's an investment, right? And we've talked about cordless stuff in the past. Uh, you know, find a, a cordless system that has the tools that you may want in the future um, and is not, because they're all proprietary, right? Yeah. You can't get a Makita drill and a Bosch jigsaw. Uh, both cordless and, and expect to share right. batteries and chargers and all of that. Yeah, so, you know, there, there's a few top brands. I mean, the uh, the guys I hired to do my deck mm -hmm. had uh, another brand, but they had everything. You know, they had uh, the, uh, the, the circular saws. Is that the cord yellow brand? Yeah, and they had the, the battery. <laughs> Why are we saying the, the yeah, DeWalt? The right. They had the battery-operated circular saws. They had drills. They had, it was unbelievable. I think I remember showing you a mm -hmm. picture or show, maybe you saw it in person. They had it all laid out. Yep. And one night, they they would just leave their gear out in the yard or sitting up on the half finished deck or wherever, and they would go home. <laughs> and I was always amazed at that. But one night, this storm came rumbling through, and I the only deck I had it framed out, and that was it. So if I walked out my back door, I'd fall down through the frame or whatever. Right, right. And they had a few things sitting out there on the, like on the joists that they had set up, and. Um, they had all this gear out there, and I, I was like, wow, it was 3 a.m., and the storm was coming through. I'm like, I feel like I should bring it in. Right, or throw a tarp over it or And something. I kind of went out, I think I grabbed a few tools, but didn't get it all. The next morning, they came back, and I told they were wondering where some of their tools were. I told, oh, I sorry, I have them inside. I, oh, don't worry about that. We don't worry about those. <laughs> they weren't concerned at all about the rain. They, they just said, here, can it? We'll, we'll, those yeah. tools will take care of themselves, and they just kept on working. Yeah. The ones that were left out, no problem. So There's I'm not a, saying you should do that. No, but, don't do And that. these guys were obviously professionals, and, and, the, and the workers probably didn't aren't the ones paying for it, that sort of thing. But <laughs> it was interesting that the ones that were yeah. left out, no problem, kept on. All know. right, so if anyone has a question about drills or any other topic, just hit us up in the chat uh, on YouTube. And so my daughter, I got her a drill I, I mentioned during the show. What I ended up getting for her was a uh, one of those small Bosch 12 volt ones. You used to right. have one around the studio somewhere. Yeah, I don't know if it's, up, know. it's upstairs in my garage and out in my workshop. All but right. the real little ones. Yeah, so it, it takes a little 12 volt cell. But you have to be careful because there are some chintzy little ones that just have no power at all. And then there's the Bosch and some others that actually are usable. That's for, right. This is, was the Bosch yeah. that I got her, and uh, I kind of I don't know. I'm a tool junkie, right? But so they also They're have handy. a little impact driver in that little 12-volt oh, okay. system. And she was, uh, 
they were doing some set building in film school, and uh, she brought in. Everyone was impressed. And, no, they yeah. have the chuck though that's limited to the what's that called? It has like the it's three. It's the quarter quarter inch, quarter inch uh, right hex yeah. shank chuck. Yeah. So they have that, but they also have a chuck like this, depending which one you get. Okay. And I think I got her the one with the quarter inch uh, shank chuck. Um, it's a preference. I, I think I would have rather have gotten a, a variable chuck like this because you have more options when it comes to drill bits and things like that, and then use the quarter inch drive one for the impact driver. So the, if you get the quarter inch, then you're limited to those bits that have the, the quarter drills. inch. Yeah, they do have drill bits that uh, have that like yeah. snap in, a yeah. uh, little quarter inch shank on them. But, or, uh, the, or the, yeah, the drill bits or the, the uh, uh, I think it's the screw bits. Right, yeah, your Phillips and, yeah. and uh, whatever kind of bits, yes. Okay. So why would you, uh, is that then maybe the, is, is that, should, should that kind of drill be the first drill a homeowner gets or not necessarily? <laughs> you know, I've, I've bought several of them. My, my mother-in-law uh, yeah. moved to a new house, right? And I'm doing a project for her. And part of the, kind of went on, what went on when she moved is she cleaned out everything, you know, 40 years of, of stuff from her old house. And moved to an apartment and then bought a new house. So anyway, uh, no drill. So there I'm trying to, uh, you know, repair a fence and this and that. And so anyway, I bought another one of those 12 volt um, sets for her because uh, I think some people have smaller hands; they're not as strong. Yeah. So there's some weight to this. Right. And some of those little Bosch 12 volt drills are really lightweight. They're handy. And they, they have some capabilities that uh, that your twenty nine dollar Kmart special drill maybe doesn't have. Right. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I like them. Obviously, I mean, I have one, but. Uh, but your your go to is going to be this yeah, right. because you have it, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I I I got it before I got these. So once I got this, really, this sure. is what you need. This is uh, the all purpose. Right. Do everything. Um, and, yeah. But come on, you still have this. You're not I'll, getting rid of this. And yeah. I've got, I I've probably got one, two, I've got I'm probably three, four, I'm five different ones I'm thinking if I put a big, like huge this. bit in this, this could help me uh, do the hole for the uh, basketball net. The hole Just for the basketball net? Do a whole bunch of holes to loosen up the soil. <laughs> <laughs> a big, like, 20-inch So bit. if you're watching this and paying attention, <laughs> Paul is putting in a basketball net for his 11-year-old, 12-year-old daughter. And has to drill a three foot deep hole. How far across? In how, like shale. How wide is that clay. hole? Clay, 16 inches. 16 inches across, three feet deep. Yeah, for concrete. And he's fretting about it, and that's all he's talking about. It's a very about. hard uh, clay that we have. And uh, so I'm gonna do it by hand. I'm not gonna use an auger or anything because I figure I need the exercise A and B. So you're gonna put a drill bit in here and you're gonna drill holes uh, to I'm thinking, you know, <laughs> it, it's all rocky clay. So I was thinking, you know, just to loosen up no. uh, six inches at a time. You're just gonna get your shovel out and yeah. just <laughs> dig your dang hole, Paul. The shovel would not penetrate the other day when I tried <laughs> it. So what about digging about six inches to a foot and then like dumping water in there? Will that loosen it? No, no. that'd probably make it worse. Uh, I don't know. Well, I gave you that bar, yeah. and I gave you the post hole digger, so yeah. now you got some stuff. All right. So we see people coming in and out of the watching the stream, but no one's, uh, everyone's being shy uh, as far as hitting us up on the chat. Anyone have any questions? Any other topics you want us to cover? Yeah. We won't call you out. <laughs> I might. <laughs> Unless we know you. All right, so. Stream health is good. Stream health is good. I guess that's a good thing. This is our only second time ever doing this. Oh, now he's watching it, right? What is that, an ad for something? That's what it looks like. All right, well, that's good. For the rest of the folks. All right. So, hey, for those ads, we get, uh, that's how we stay on the air. So if you ever see those ads, don't click that skip button. <laughs> Actually, just are we allowed to say that? We're probably not allowed to say that, I don't know. right? So we're probably violating some why. terms of service or something. Watch the ad and even click on dollars, the ad so. links, right? Yeah, we get a whole like twelve cents for every thousand <laughs> people that watch the dang ad, right? So that that pays for the for Paul's new fancy drill. Yeah. <laughs>
All right. Well, our listeners are quiet tonight, so I think we can wrap this up. All right. Just think, if you're on, you can ask any question. You Even want. if it's not home improvement, ask Paul where he gets his haircut. Yeah. Or uh, there you go. Where did we get these shirts? Philosophy. Or, uh, uh, you know. Politics. Politics. Do you want to talk politics? I, I'm pretty well versed. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> Get us in trouble. We can talk about the electoral map um, analysis by else. Nate Silver on the uh, 538 blog. Um, <laughs> what? All right. All right. Well, that's it. Thanks for, we're going to, I think he's going to kill this here. So thanks for watching. I don't remember how to stop it. No, you stop it over in oh. OBS. That's there right. you go.